right, there we go. So, we now have three choices. That's the first time I think we've seen three choices for one of the branches. Uh, with the interrogation, that might make a difference there. I think that's the only... Yeah, that is our current only choice that we have. So let's go back. Chat, do you want to be sly about this interrogation? Or do you want to be chill about it? Which one do you want to do? They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the class at good cop, blank, cop interrogation. Chill? Or sly? Oh, you guys are splitting it down the middle. Someone tie break it. We did hard. Chill. All right. Oh, wait. No. Oh, yep. Chill. Chill. All right. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. I'll handle this. Just got to play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. So he's going to see us this time because he doesn't have the light in his eyes. <laughs> Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. It was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rollo just got a little startled. Rollo's here? Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids give old Hiram a good scare. Just get... Uh, let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my gran up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. Since your gran moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town. I love his sassy pose, it's the cutest. An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes. To the corner. Barrels of explosives. I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This will make sense in time. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Mm -mm. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past, indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A past that must be brought to... He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light. Son of a... I darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rollo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. Oh, sorry. Double click there. I'll let the adults handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? Not now, back. Is that an ending, I guess? They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. There's another one. All right, so I guess Sly no, then. We certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board.
Okay. Sly it is. I'm glad that we did it. To be fair, I actually like doing the the wrong answers first just to get a little bit more story. Um instead of like choosing the right ones and having to go back. Alright, they run the good classic good cop sly cop interrogation. They'd run the classic good cop sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. Okay, so this is just each of them getting a turn. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Uh, what's going on here? You're that Modeville girl. Please, call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This was gonna be easy. <laughs> oh, he brought you a toy? Oh, that's cute. I'd love to teach my Ollie how to play fetch. But, uh, I'm not sure how well he'd take to it. He already likes chasing after things, though. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you'd need some backup. But she sent a child? A bad way to avoid prying eyes. Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. That had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to... her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, Bill Gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out that we're going to destroy the source? Well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Are you sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. God, there is one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing, really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. She said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and nowhere to put it. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking, you should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. That's great. <laughs> Beck for the win. You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf, but all he ever sells us is apples. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. The password, Rollo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine, in the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. City heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Okay. What's another word for underground? Buried? Covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies. So you would be 21? N would be 14? D would be... Oh... It's an anagram. Dunkreed's drugstore. Luca and Beck looked at Rollo with amazement. Rollo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or 
Kren's nude rug store. <laughs> yeah, I think you were right the first time. How do you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. I've never been good at those. He was foster. Tom, nothing except to respect his sister. Yeah, that's so cute. All right, Nun Creed. So this guy again, he's he's a little scary. He also was hitting on my grandma, not grandma. Uh-oh. You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. <laughs> he got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. Gravity Falls. I know I loved finding all the hidden stuff in Gravity Falls. <gasps> Bull Bay with the 20 months of read stuff. Hello. Thank you. We eat. I'm going to need to try this game soon, it looks so pretty. I can't recommend this game enough, dear lord, if you guys want to play it on your own. Um, it is story-based, like, you know, I don't know exactly how much replayability there is, but just, it's fun. I really, really like it. Uh, that was a very fantastic Wii. <laughs> You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. It's caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think... Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do some good, something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. It's just a temporary arrangement. The glow could be seen from our damn backyard. They're dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When all this inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Eris's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future, or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus. You will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. Oh, and let's go talk to this person again. Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do a damn thing about it. I do hate it when the villain makes a good point. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay, so this kid, I don't remember his name, but he was, um... I don't think he's a Valentine, maybe he actually is, but anyway, in Sharper Valentine's will, he said that Harris had to take on this kid and take care of him. And he's always just kind of been a weird piece in this equation. But now he's outside the drugstore? Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Ah, oh, gosh darn it. Hey, Solomon. Looking for Mr. Nuncreed, is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where do you get the candy from? You might say we have an agreement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. <laughs> Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. Though we might not always have family to rely on, licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Which, by the way, leads me back into our question of the day, you guys. It's actually a double question of the day. Um, what was your favorite Halloween costume that you ever wore? Or if you don't celebrate, or if you want to answer this one. Uh, what's your favorite candy? Oh, yeah, I guess. 
I like sour gobs. Certain of you do. I always wonder why Mr. Nuncree kept licorice in stock. You must eat through enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold hard cash. <laughs> you went as a Power Ranger? That's neat. Well, he's right, it's locked. There's gotta be more clues. Okay, let's see. <gasps> Hershey's Cookies and Cream Bar? Yes! The phone booth, maybe? Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Because we know that the floor opens up there. Mystery Beacon Plans. I just started and I love it so far. It's really, really good. Dear Lord, this game is just amazing. We're, we're much later in the game, so I don't want to spoil you on anything, of course. Uh, but I hope that you enjoy it also. It is... Amazing. <laughs> Bedtime stories. Yeah, no, it's very storybook-esque, yeah. Besides Mr. Nuncreed, no. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. That's not a normal phone booth. It's got, like, a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Cred Nude's rug store. I mean, underground secrets. The password! Beck flung open the door, and they all squeezed in. Alright, so we know that this goes down, because we went there for one of our endings here. Just wanted to come say hi, for sure, for sure. I hope that you have a fun time with it. Let us know how you enjoy it when you're done. Thank you so much for stopping by. Alright, let's see here. Beck cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground. Secrets. Sounds like that did something. Great, now what? I guess we have... Oh. The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. Have a good one, Mr. Kins. We'll see you later. It was unclear where they ended up. But at least it was solid ground. This is our first time seeing it. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. I knew it. You knew there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth? Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Alright, Zeros, and we'll see you later as well. Have a good one. Do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the transdimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue 12 were real? Rollo, at one point or another, you said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. Looks like each of these has something written on them. I'm more interested in this. If this is a broken mask... Um, this suit has a broken mask. So, have we found our mystery warehouse creeper? At least we found their hazmat suit. It walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Paul says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa, you don't realize you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Perennial Harvest Main Office. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff? Is she involved in all this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going down to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Just a bizarre amount of lot, my favorite candy at the moment. It's Reese's Sticks. 
Reese's sticks? I don't know if I know those. I know take fives. That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside her things. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Those hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Beanie, beanie, miney. <gasps> Someone's gonna come out from the Valentine place? Rolla, what did you do? Oh no, it was him who hit the button. Okay. Wafers with peanut butter and chocolate. Oh, that sounds good. Nothing. I didn't mo even mow yet. <gasps> what was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Oh, <gasps> there he is. Shit. That was definitely him who grabbed us. Shit. Shit. Awesome. You all need to come with me now. I'm not going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password. They love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold down now, I, I like my skin. <laughs> This all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You just sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before. He gestured toward the strange tubes. All of this? That's a lie. It's true, I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bread-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were a sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Big hats and seasonal special races like the pumpkin to Christmas tree. Peanut yeah, butter. Chocolate ratio is just better, yeah. I love Kit Kats, too. They're really good. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. Ugh, Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said, no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. I love Kit Kats, but Kit Kats do not like me. Oh no, that's the worst. But the thing I could never get him to understand was it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about that one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes, one time to Sharper Valentine. He'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Gluten, yeah. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. What? You really don't know? My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's gonna disrupt the festival? Why would she- the color drained from Nuncrete's face. But how does she know? Apparently, she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers was way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. Nuncreed grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what it is she's messing with. 
I, uh... Tell me now, she's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map of the mark on the fountain in Town Square. Fountain? But why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source? What the heck is the source? She tries to destroy the source. It could catalyze and... Dear God, she's gonna freeze us all. So this is what stops us from getting frozen. Uh, his ears! <laughs> his ears are just... <laughs> He's like a dog looking out a window of a car. You all need to run. Run where? Away. As far from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. Oop! Nuncreed out. That did not go how I expected. So... We're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. You good? Yep. I love this town. <laughs> Jack's just like, I'm here for it. 